Today is the birthday of five time world chess champion Vishwanathan Anand and uh, I'm going to cover five lesser known games of Vishwanathan Anand. I feel that these games deserve more love and having been covered so much before. The first game that I have is between Sridhar NR and Vishwanathan Anand. Sridhar NR was white and he played d4 to which Vishwanathan Anand employed the king's Indian. This happened in 1982 in Tamil Nadu and after e4 this is the king's Indian he employs the zamish or samish variation of the king's Indian with f3. Then in king's Indian the move f7 f5 is very typical and common and to facilitate that black plays knight h5, knight d7, knight e8 or knight h7 depending on the situation and in this game he goes for knight h5 and after knight e2 he gets the f5 foundry. And after a few moves there comes another interesting idea employed by Vishwanathan Anand. After queen c2 he plays a very interesting pawn sacrifice clearing the path for one of his pieces. He plays e4. Now what this does is that it makes the e5 square available for the knight or the bishop to occupy. And after f4 he plays knight g4 attacking the bishop with tempo and after the bishop goes to g1 he goes f4. And now knight e5 or bishop e5 both could come any time. So here white plays e5 sacrificing the pawn so that the bishop opens uh, up and then you know it's able to attack h7. So here he played bishop takes e5 and after bishop h7 checking h8 the position is already very much in black's favor but he should have continued with bishop g6 to eliminate this dangerous knight but he went queen g6 which turned out to be a mistake. And here he played a rook f6 attacking the queen so that if the knight is taken the rook would come to h6 and the bishop could be taken next. So that happened in the game. He played rook h6 and after queen f7 I think this is a good moment for you to stop and think what you would do as black. I'm going to reveal the answer now. In the game Vishwanathan Anand played rook takes h7 and then after queen g6. If you're considering rook h2 yes that is interesting. But he first played rook h6, but rook h2 also was a winning. And after queen f7, again a good moment for you to think, will you play rook takes h2 now or will you play something else? Okay, I'm going to tell you the answer now. Rook h2 is a mistake because if you play rook h2 in this position, bishop h2, queen h4, there is a perpetual with queen f8. So it's important that you play bishop e6 first so that the rook on a8 defends the last rank and then the queen could happily go to h4. So that's what happened in the game after d6 he took rook takes h2 and after bishop h2 came queen h4 with an unavoidable mating idea. So queen h2 is a mate and this is where white resigned. In the second game, uh, this is a game between Vishnathan Anand and Siddiqui ma. This happened in Dharwad, which is very close to where I live. I live in Belgaum. So this was a junior championship again in 1982. They played um, uh, the modern. And you see that uh, Vishwanathan Anand completely followed all the opening principles, got his pieces out quickly and then uh, also prevented his opponent from castling. In this position after bishop g5 97, he played bishop b5 check, making things difficult for black. If black played c6 here then d6 is coming and after queen takes d1 he could simply play rook takes d1 and after b6 he can play bishop c4 and continue to pose a lot of problems to black. Even castling here is not possible. So white has a lot of initiative here. But after bishop b5 check he played king f8 uh, and now Vishwanathan simply castled and then you know that the rook is watching the king already. And then h6 happened and after bishop h4 he played king g8. Now this line is okay but what about this pin? So to take advantage of this pin here Anand sacrificed a pawn very similar to what he did in the previous game with e4. He played d6 so that the d5 square is available to the knight. And after c takes d6 he goes knight d5 intending to go knight takes e7. To which he, his opponent played g5 but for this Anand was already ready with knight takes g5. This is a sacrifice where black is completely destroyed. So the king is no longer so safe and then after hg5, bishop g5, you can see knight e7 is still threatened. You cannot go knight c6 because bishop into c6 happens. So he played f6 after which knight takes f6, bishop takes f6, bishop c4 check happened and after d5 
he coolly just took the bishop because d c four is not possible as the queen is hanging, and then after queen e eight he played bishop takes d five check knight d five queen d five king g seven. And when you are attacking, it's very important to include all your pieces in the attack. Bring all the toys, as Jakob Agard says in his attacking manual. In this position, after King G7, Anand played Rook A F1, bringing the last piece into the game. And then there is nobody to save this king. After Knight D7, Rook F7 check happened, and then Bishop E7, so that the queen is completely uh, pushed away from the defense, and Queen E6 is the threat. And after Knight of Knight. Uh, f8 rook 1 f6 check happened and then after king g5 there was a mate bishop f5 is met by a direct mate with queen takes f5 and if king g4 there is rook f4 checkmate so that was the second game let's move on to the third game the third game was a game between anand and sp shah this happened in sub junior championship in 1983 and here he played against in nidoff and this was the bishop g5 line I'm going to quickly come to the critical position after bishop b5 and give you a chance to see what you would do as white. So after bishop b5, he played bishop takes b5 check. Note that queen b5 is not possible because of the mate on e7. And in this position, if you play knight d7 check, the king is going to d7. So based on these points, he came up with a nice combination with bishop b5, a b5. And since this queen is protecting the e7 square, he played c3. Asking the queen where it wants to go, the queen cannot come to c4 because of the mate, and queen has to remain on this diagonal. So queen c5 makes sense, but this doesn't stop uh, Anand from winning. He plays rook takes d5, and here queen d5 is met by queen e7 mate, and queen c7 is met by knight d7 mate, and that's game over. So here his opponent resigned. So a very nice shot. With that, let's quickly move on to the next game. This is a game between Vishnath Anand and none other than Victor Koshnoi as black. And Koshnoi employed the French defense. And uh, there comes, comes a point where everything seems very normal. And here, uh, of course, queen d4 is not possible because of bishop h7 check. So here he plays c5 and after dc5 he plays queen c7. Now what will you do as white? This is an important moment. I'll give you some options. Do you want to play c6 to attack the bishop? Do you want to play rook h e1 to protect this knight? Do you want to retreat this knight back to f3 or to c4? Or do you want to play something else? Now, if you're considering c6, well done. That's one of the good moves in the position because after bishop c6, you can go rook h e1. But if you're considering knight f3, that's not the best move. The best move here is rook h e1. And don't worry about the pawn on g2. Now after rook h e1, black played bishop g2. One thing is clear, white cannot play rook g1 and attack this bishop again because his knight hangs. Considering this, Vishwanathan Anand plays a very nice move in this position. He goes rook e2, making sure that the d1 rook joins the attack on the g line. So this bishop into g2 is now working in white's favor because after that, it is white who will operate on the g line and after rook e2 king h8 rook d rook g1 the bishop has to move you can see from here onwards white gives uh, white keeps threatening black consistently after bishop d5 he plays queen f4 idea is knight g6 check and the queen hangs so queen takes c5 happened and now he makes another quiet move with stunning effect he plays rook e3 the idea is very simple. He just wants to double and there is no defense against this powerful threat. Believe it or not, in this position, Koshnoi resigned. A sample variation could be that if, if black plays something like rook a c8, there is rook e g3 doubling and then let's say if black defends this with knight h5, there is a nice queen sacrifice with queen takes h6. After g takes h6, of course you cannot play king g8 because of the mate. So g takes h6, then rook g8 ends with a smothered mate kind of a position. The king cannot come to h8 because bishop is guarding. King cannot come to g7 because the rook is keeping an eye. So that was the fourth game. And the last game that I have in mind is the game between Vishwanathan Anand and Bakro. So Bakro was wide in this game. I have noticed that... Uh, Anansar plays a lot with his knights and uh, this is another example. So here 
in this position after bishop d2 he deliberately gives up his bishop with bishop takes c3 even with the white side you can see that he's played a lot of rosolimo games even there you could observe this pattern and after bc3 he plays bishop a6 c4 is not so easily possible because the d2 hangs so he plays rook fd1 intending to go c4 and then he plays queen c5 now e4 followed knight b6 bishop e3 queen h5 and this is the moment in which white made a mistake he could have played something like h3 to keep the balance or something like rook a b1 but he played a rook d6 giving a chance to black black uh, answer played knight c4 the bishop is attacked the rook is attacked now queen d1 had to be played but he played rook takes c6 and the tactical sequence that follows from here is a very nice one consider calculating i'm now going to reveal the move he played knight takes e3 if you go f takes e3 in this position then the position is already quite bad and it's a second rank is completely open which means a move like rook ad8 is also possible but after knight takes e3 back row played rook takes a6 and this happened in 2001 by the way after rook takes a6 he played rook ab8 attacking the queen now this queen cannot come to a3 because of the fork the queen cannot come to the squares it's already controlled so the move that comes to mind is queen a4 which is what happened in the game and then comes another threatening move the seventh rank is considered as the heaven for the rooks and so goes the rook to b2 the point being that f e3 is not possible because of queen e2 attacking the bishop on g2 and it's not just that queen f2 is also threatened if the bishop moves there is queen f2 followed by queen h2 mate so that means f e3 is not possible and black is also threatening to go queen e2 anyway so if you make a move like let's say bishop h1 there is queen e2 coming and there is nothing you can do about queen f2 so in this position back row decided to prevent queen e2 altogether with rook e1 what will you do as black the computers give this as mate in six but if you find the winning move that's enough okay the winning move is queen to e2 a brilliant queen sacrifice rook e2 is not possible because of the checkmate so after queen e2 his opponent resigned he cannot take f e3 because the mate follows queen f2 is threatened if he plays a move like rook f1 there is knight takes f1 and then let's say after queen d4 there is knight e3 back and black is winning so those were my picks uh, which i feel deserve more love happy birthday to wishy sir again uh, and i hope you liked uh, these we these games that i covered i'll be back with another one soon until then take care bye bye